Romanesque architecture, and above the all, uh, mm -hmm. front door, there's a statue. Mm -hmm. uh, there at St. John's, it's the, it's the child Jesus. Mm -hmm. You notice there's no beard. Right. And uh, it has the words carved in stone, Come all you who labor and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of like a neon sign to the world. That's why they put it on the facade, the face of the church, inviting people to come and experience the peace and, and healing that is in Christ. Here, we have the same doorway with a Christ uh, statue, but an older Christ. I think it's the Sacred Heart. Mm. And then this one, it says, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. So it's interesting, the difference. Mm. One says, Come, and this one says, Go. In other words, both dimensions have to be kept in, in balance. Mm -hmm. That you come to the church in order to be empowered, therefore, to go <laughs> and to live as the church. So it's two different sides of the same coin. But uh, in classical churches, you, you'll see oftentimes a statue and a mm -hmm. phrase from Scripture on it to, to tell something about what the nature of the church is. Very good. Well, let's go inside a, a church, and let's go right all, all the way to the front, to the sanctuary. Um, uh, what are some important elements in the sanctuary? And then a follow-up question to that is, in older churches, you see the sanctuary definitely at the front with uh, people uh, in the pews right looking at the sanctuary. In newer churches, it seems the sanctuary is almost in the middle or at least pulled yeah. up, and people are kind of around. Is, is, is there an intentional reason for that there's change? A, there's a theology or a theological emphasis being placed on, on something by way of the of that architectural feature <clears throat> so classical churches when you are built upon the structure of the roman basilica that goes back to the pre-christian era okay and the roman basilica was a it looks like a church and there was a temple and in the apse area at the end mm -hmm. there would be a statue of a pagan god and then they would have uh courtrooms along and, and uh, legal counsel along the vestibule, oh, the side okay. aisles. Those would all be closed in, or they'd be open, but they'd have offices in there. Well, when Christianity was legalized, the Emperor Constantine gave the use of the churches so that we could, they gave us the use of those basilicas in Rome as church buildings, and they fit perfectly in our mm -hmm. theology. So in place of the real pagan god, we removed it, and you put the altar. And uh, so that when you enter the church, your eyes immediately go to the, the mm. east end, mm -hmm. the, the apse end, the center. So you put the most important thing right in the center, which is the altar, and on, in classical churches, the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. So that right in the center, front and center, you have the most important thing, the altar and the tabernacle. And so that, was, that, would, also, that would convey immediately through the experience that we are being moved forward. Oh, your okay. eyes go forward. Your body, your spirit is moving forward through the architecture to Christ who's present in the Eucharist and at the altar, which also leads you, of course, to beyond. I mean, mm -hmm. So, sort of like we're all in procession. You know, okay. we're, the oh, like pews are idea. like this. Mm -hmm. So we're all in statio. If we used to use the monastic uh, mm -hmm. observance. We're all lined up in procession making our way to heaven, being led by Christ in the person of the priest through the sacrifice of the Mass to our eternal home of heaven. Mm -hmm. So it conveys a theology. Mm -hmm. It conveys a point. And that's one of the arguments why uh, traditionally altar, altars were <clears throat> situated so that the priest stood facing in the same direction as the people. Because the priest is standing in the person of Christ leading people in procession mm -hmm. to heaven. And you can't lead a procession walking backwards. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a very important point. And that's why there, there is a lot of ink being spilled on the discussion of whether or not we made a mistake putting alders facing the people. Mm. Because the theology is Christ in the person of the priest leading the procession of his people facing the same direction leading us to heaven. Mm. And again, you don't lead a procession walking backwards. Which seems to also tie into Old Testament model of uh, Aaron. Um, yeah, the, the, the priest Aaron. Yes. That's right. So this, this theology is reflected in the architecture, whereas there's another theology 
reflected in uh, churches created the round mm. or moving the altar out. The emphasis there is that Christ is, is among his people, mm. uh, right in the midst of them. I mean, it's a legitimate theology. Mm -hmm. But I think what often happens, in the danger in that is that if Christ is already among his people, then we're already home. Mm. We're not going anywhere. He's here, we're there, and there you are. Let's look at one another. I think there, I think there is a, a deficiency in that. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think it's more accurate, the traditional version of church architecture is more accurately conveying what's happening in the liturgy. The liturgy is not essentially us looking at one another and celebrating the here and now as well as much as the liturgy is celebrating our movement from time to eternity. And so churches in the round or the altar pulled out does not convey that as well. And you know it's re also reflected in some people's attitude that the liturgy uh, doesn't have the transcendence mm -hmm. to it that that it, it should, I think. Uh, and as a consequence, it's very casual, mm -hmm. very earthly oriented, lacks a lot of symbolism, uh, and uh, emphasizes the here and now rather than the then, then and there. That's, that's uh, some incredible points. I hope you're understanding this because uh, it, it's, it's easy to understand, but um, what a gift you are, Monsignor. Oh, thank, uh, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, one other question. Um, and this is more traditional churches, but not always. I mean, uh, St. Teresa's is uh, 1950s, mm -hmm. and you still have it there. But what is, uh, what is the purpose of stained glass windows, and do they have to be theologically correct? Uh, stained glass windows uh, are a beautiful means of teaching the faith. And in the Middle Ages, the stained glass windows in churches were called the Bible in glass. Mm -hmm. The Bible in glass, G-L-A-S-S. -S. Because you remember... For much of the Dark Ages there, at the fall of the Roman Empire, many people were Ill illiterate, couldn't read, couldn't write, but they had eyes and they could mm -hmm. see pictures. It's like when you're a little child, you know, you, pictures tell, mm -hmm. tell a story. And so they would tell the stories of the faith through stained glass, mm -hmm. the Bible in glass, or the faith in glass. So. You, that, that has continued through the centuries. That's why the, the stained glass windows in the classical churches always have images on them. Okay. Uh, the, the miracles of Jesus you might have, uh, the mysteries of the rosary, uh, the seven sacraments, and like at St. John's, the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Here we have the mysteries of the rosary and uh, the 15 decades, of the 15 decades, 15 mysteries of the rosary. Down below and up above, uh, symbols of the sacraments different mm. sacraments. And uh, so when you come in, you learn something about the Catholic faith by just looking at the windows. You know, you see a cup and a mm -hmm. host. You see, you know, even if you're an unbeliever, you say, hmm, this Catholic thing must have something about food and drink. Mm. You see the image of the pouring of the water. Hmm, this Catholic thing must have something to do with water, baptism, and so forth. Cross, crucifixion. Hmm, this Catholic thing must have something to do with the the crucifixion of someone, and then a picture of the resurrection. Oh, this Catholic thing must have something to do with something rising from the dead. So you learn about this Catholic thing in, this, in the symbols of the stained glass uh, that are around the church. I think it, there, we deprive people of, of uh, an added means of, of seeing the faith, not just hearing the faith. Mm -hmm. You add one, you reduce the, the impact by one sense S-E-N-S-E, -S -E, mm -hmm. by not having it conveyed in glass. Mm -hmm.